This is the voice of Idaho agriculture. Each week, we bring you agriculture news and perspective. Stay tuned to this week's Idaho Farm Bureau's weekly podcast from the state capitol. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jake Putnam. Today on Capitol Hill, lawmakers were talking about hemp production. Specifically, talk was about guidance and the USDA's interim final rules for hemp production. Those rules will bring clarity for hemp producers. The Farm Bureau's Michael Clements has more. The Department of Agriculture's hemp program announced Tuesday allows the sector to move forward according to the American Farm Bureau Federation. Scott Bennett, AFBF Congressional Relations Director, says the interim final rule creates much-needed standards for production, testing, and licensing. This is a long-awaited interpretation from USDA of what Congress passed in the 2018 Farm Bill as it relates to the legalization of hemp. This interim final rule provides clarity to producers on everything from crop insurance, THC, testing methods, crop destruction protocols to interstate commerce. Hemp farmers have struggled getting financing for their operations as the banking industry needed guidance from USDA. Bennett says the interim final rule allows bankers to serve the hemp industry. The banking industry largely has awaited these regulations in order to develop guidance regarding deposits derived from hemp operations. Without these regulations, the banking industry hasn't been willing to take the risk of accepting deposits or lending money to these businesses. So we see this as a positive enforcement of receiving financing for your hemp operation. Bennett says hemp producers should review the rule and provide feedback to USDA. The public now has an opportunity to provide comment through the Federal Register for a period of 60 days beginning this Thursday, October 31st. I encourage producers to take a look at the interim final rule, see how it may impact their hemp operation, and then provide that input to the USDA. Michael Clements, Washington. And growing hemp is still illegal in Idaho. Nonetheless, on Capitol Hill, Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue provided details of the proposed domestic hemp production program. The interim final rule now published and available for public comment. I'm pleased to announce that USDA has published the rule establishing the U.S. Domestic Hemp Production Program in time for producers to make planning decisions for 2020. We have our teams operating with all hands on deck to develop a regulatory framework that meets congressional intent while seeking to provide a fair, consistent, and science-based process for states, tribes, and individual producers who want to participate in this program. As mandated by Congress, our program requires all hemp growers to be licensed and includes testing protocols to ensure that hemp grown under this program is hemp and nothing else. USDA has also worked to provide licensed growers access to loans and risk management products available for other crops. As an interim final rule, the rule becomes effective immediately upon publication in the Federal Register. But we still want to hear from you. Help us make sure the regulations meet your needs. That's why the publication of the interim final rule also includes a public comment period. Idaho farmers will have to wait as Idaho hemp bills were defeated last legislative session But the USDA officials are hoping farmers who are thinking about growing hemp will consider all the risks before taking the plunge. Many farmers are excited about growing hemp, but several words of caution from USDA officials. One, which should be obvious. Just like uh, every other crop has its risks and rewards, uh, hemp is not without its production risks and difficulties either. Under Secretary of Agriculture Greg Ibaugh, one risk is that weather or some other factor could cause the THC levels in the crop to exceed the legal limit. And Under Secretary Bill Northey says if that happens, you could be stuck with a worthless crop. It's quite likely that a high uh, THC level will not be covered for crop insurance. There may be lots of reasons that could happen, but I think that cause of loss of a high THC will not likely be covered in a crop insurance policy. At least that's the way the whole farm revenue protection policy is set up now. But Greg Ibaugh says maybe the biggest risk for new hemp producers is to plant a crop without a processor or a buyer lined up for it. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington. And the question surface on Capitol Hill, what will industrial hemp producers need in the way of documents to participate in USDA conservation loan and risk management programs? Rod Bain reports. 
Industrial hemp producers participating in USDA's domestic hemp production program for the 2020 growing season will also be able to participate in various risk management, conservation, and loan programs. Agriculture Undersecretary for Farm Production and Conservation Bill Northey advises producers to take advantage of these USDA programs. Hemp producers will need to file an acreage report with the Farm Service Agency that's typically done after spring plantings are complete. So that would be likely next summer in many cases or late spring. Additional information growers must provide to their local USDA office includes the USDA state or tribal production license or authorization number, and they'll need to identify each field or subfield or lot, even greenhouses on which hemp is being grown. We'll also need to detail the intended use for that hemp, whether it's fiber or grain or seed or other processing. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. That's it for this week's podcast. You can drop us a line on Twitter or on Facebook and tell us what you thought of this week's program. For Steve Ritter, this is Jake Putnam and the voice of Idaho Agriculture.